Welcome to Saratoga Springs, New York, home of the oldest thoroughbred racetrack in the country, Saratoga Racecourse. Open for a traditional summer meet from mid-July to Labor Day, Saratoga is a destination on the bucket list of nearly every horse racing fan in the United States and for many around the world. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour around the spa so you can either see what it's like or take a trip down memory lane. But there's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. And they're off. Pentagon rode smoothly, but it's Rudo with the most early speed. Up oh, your sleeve oh, goes up on the outside. Oh, and in between, Pentagon wants to be a part of it, so it's to be across with a lot to go. We're four go. Yeah. The first thing to know is that Saratoga is always busy. After all, it is a tourist destination in addition to a racing destination. Fans come from all over, but while attending can essentially be split into two groups, those in the grandstand and those in the picnic area, which is why you can see I'm skipping the long line to get my cooler checked by security since I didn't have one. Once inside, there's a booth set up to buy your programs, which is always my first stop and an old pole marker from Aqueduct Racetrack that the great Man o' War passed beneath. This is the first of many historical nods throughout the track that has been here since 1864. Then the path will split into three directions, but we'll go straight first. You'll cross over the horse's walkway, which runs through the middle of everything in the picnic area, and take the path towards the grandstand, which you can see in the background. There are all sorts of little shops to buy merchandise, hats, photographs, jewelry, and more along the main walkway. You also have a little version of the Hall of Fame. The National Thoroughbred Racing Museum and Hall of Fame is up and across the street from the track. But the track itself honors the most recent inductees and a few local legends in this little pop-up area. But just this first walkway is a great example as to why Saratoga is so different compared to every other track. The track is alive in pretty much every corner. It's like going to a festival or a busy market. Saratoga is the perfect example of a track that still tries to focus on the experience. It's not just about the betting. Most of what makes Saratoga special is the atmosphere produced by those who are there for the racing and those who are there for the fun. It really is an experience that goes unmatched by the majority of other racetracks on most days of the year. Now we're inside the first floor of the grandstand. There are no doors in or out, both the entranceways to the track or from the picnic area are wide open to help traffic flow. There are tons of food options throughout the facility and you can see a bunch of them inside the grandstand here. There are two gift shops inside the grandstand and plenty of wagering windows lining the entire middle of the room. And as you can see, it definitely still has a lot of that traditional style, old grandstand kind of feel.
Directly ahead is the winner's circle, which is right by the finish line. This area can get pretty cramped, especially in big races when people try to get close to see the champions, but it's still good to have the winner's circle up front in the center of the entire grandstand like this so that anyone can get to it no matter where their ticket is. And there's that famous grandstand design. Now you're at Saratoga. The apron is massive and stretches nearly the entire length of the stretch. There's plenty of chances to find a spot to watch from, but it could be difficult to see if you're not in the front rows. It also, in general, is hard to see the backside no matter where you are, ground level or in the seats. There are lots of trees and signs in the infield blocking your view, and just in general, the rails are so high because of the turf courses to where when there's nothing blocking your view, the rails are blocking your view. But you still get a perfect view of the stretch run. And if you're on that fence, you get a great shot of the post parades and the horses leaving after the race, so you're still going to be able to see them quite a bit. And you know me, I always prefer to be seated somewhere elevated. The grandstand has plenty of seating options throughout the length of the stretch. You can tell you're somewhere historic and that many people have been here before you as you take a look around. You have the old fans up top trying to keep you cool in the summer heat, the poles that hold the grandstand up, all signs of an older grandstand from a track that's been here for a while. But this is definitely the best place to be to watch the races. The seating can get a little pricey, especially on your big days like Whitney and Travers, but on most days it won't be anything too crazy for the seating. And if you're accomplishing a lifelong dream by attending Saratoga, you definitely want to make sure you have a seat either in the grandstand or the clubhouse. Above the seating, the upper section of the grandstand contains more food and drink options, wagering windows, and simulcasts so you don't have to go to the ground floor. Even without a seat, being up here provides great overhead views of both the track and the picnic area. On the other side of the winner's circle is the main clubhouse section. Also, there's track announcer Frank Miramati all the way up there. I don't go over here much, but something I did this year for the first time was the breakfast in the dining area. There is no experience like being at the track in the mornings, and then you add breakfast? Sign me up!
This is a must do, especially if you're visiting for the first time. The food was great and you get to watch the training and you never know which star horse you might see, like Kentucky Derby winner Mage. Now we'll exit the grandstand through this side. You'll come out beneath this covered walkway. To the left is the paddock area, which we'll head to in a moment, but first we're going to follow the jockey's walkway to their locker room. The jockeys are superstars here at Saratoga. They take pictures, autographs, you name it. They have to go right through the crowd to make it back to their locker room, so this is a great opportunity to meet your favorite jock. Back to the covered walkway, and this time we'll go towards the paddock. Now we've made it to the walkway that the horses use to get from the paddock to the track after the rider's up. This is a great place to stand to take pictures of the horses as they head out to race. Passing that, you'll see another entrance gate, and there is also a little statue honoring the most recent Travers winner in the little garden back here. We've now entered the post, which is a little section of concessions and bars. It gets very packed and hard to move around in here once the races get started, but you don't need a ticket for most of the sections. And you walk up to the edge of the post, and here's the paddock. The bar in this section will also take you directly up to the horse's walkway to the track.
This corner in the post is my favorite place to watch the paddock, but in my opinion the paddock itself is one of the few drawbacks to Saratoga. It's massive and the stalls are far away from where the picnic areas alongside the paddock are. If you're in the main intended viewing area for the paddock, the horses are nowhere close until they get riders up and start to leave. They also do one of my least favorite paddock things and have trees that they circle once saddled. For big races it means you gotta pick the one or two that you want to try and see, and then the crowd of the connections will just block any view of anyone else. So really the best way to see the horses from a longer period of time is standing in that corner over by the post. Otherwise, you're pretty much only going to get a quick glimpse of them as they're either entering the paddock or leaving the paddock. For such a great track, they could really use a more spectator view friendly paddock. But now let's take a walk through the picnic area, which is huge and spans the entirety of behind the grandstand. Anywhere that's open back here, put down your lawn chair and it's yours for the rest of the day. There's a reason people line up on the big days for when the track first opens to get the perfect picnic spot. There are big buildings for wagering and concessions spread throughout. After all, we are in Saratoga Springs, there has to be at least one spring on property, right? And that spring is Big Red Spring. You can get yourself a little cup from guest services and take a drink. If you're wondering how it tastes, let's just say I'm never doing that again. But this picnic area is essentially its own little community. This is what makes Saratoga such a special racetrack and such a different experience from anywhere else in the country. But we have finally reached the far corner of the picnic area. This far end is going to be where they have a little playground for the kids. And it's also where the horses first enter into the racetrack from the barn area to get to the paddock. I really do like the design of having the walkway from the barns to the paddock right through the middle of everything going on in this section. Seeing the horses walk their way through the middle of all this fun, all the picnic tables, and all the greenery just makes it that much more special. 
You have the Four Star Dave Sports Bar on the back of the grandstand overlooking everything going on in the paddock area. But I also gotta give a shout out to the Mac Truck. This is where I get my mac and cheese every time I come to Saratoga. On most trips, that's more than once. It is one of the best mac and cheeses you will ever have in your life. Well, that finally brings us to the end of our trip around Saratoga Racecourse. There's a reason why this track is usually ranked amongst people's favorites. It has that great festival atmosphere while you're attending. You get to see some great racing. Everywhere you look, it's just beautiful from the artwork and the designs. to the nature that's built into the picnic area. And this is just the racetrack. There is so much more to do when you come to visit Saratoga. We haven't even hit the downtown area yet, the Oklahoma training track, the sales pavilion, or the harness track. Although we'll get to that soon, don't worry. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more of the Saratoga experience in the future. But this is one of my favorite tracks in the country. It is a trip that I look forward to going on every single year. You never know who you're going to see or who you're going to meet anywhere that you turn your head. And that's why Saratoga is the legendary racetrack that's been here since 1864. Thank you for joining me today. Let me know your favorite Saratoga memories in the comments down below. If you've never been to Saratoga, let me know how excited you are to go and let me know what you thought of the track profile. But thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed your day at the spa. I'll see you at the races.